Hi everybody! Today we're moving on to the final part of my top 10 colouring book artists little mini series that I've been doing and it will turn out to be my top 11 because once I got to the end I couldn't decide between the last two artists so so there will actually be four artists that I'm talking about today. It was such a tough decision when I got to the end trying to decide between the last two artists I just thought well I'll talk about both of them anyway because I haven't coloured that much by either of them so I'd probably be able to fit them all into one video. But anyways the artist that I'm starting with today as you might have guessed is Christine Karen and this is the first picture that I coloured by Christine Karen and this one is a PDF that I've printed out. I do have quite a few others actually on the computer in my PDF little file that I haven't printed out yet which unfortunately I can't show you but this is one that I did print out and colour and this one's for a video where I show how I use paper collage in my colourings and I have used paper collage in two different ways in this picture. I've used a method where I cut out the shape from the colouring and stick the paper behind which I've done with the flowered part of her top there and her necktie or this bow on her top here that's the method where I trace out the shape transfer that onto the collage paper and cut it out and stick it on the rest of the colouring is marker based as you might have seen when I turned it round yep marker based there on the back shaded with various coloured pencils the background is chalk pastel just a couple of layers of different chalk pastel there and this one was done for a challenge on one of my colouring groups on Facebook put her in the middle there. This one was done for a challenge on one of my colouring groups on Facebook that I belong to and the challenge was to colour a picture using a traffic light or a stoplight kind of colour scheme which is red, amber and green so that's what I went with here. Just keep into those colours and I think she's worked out really well. I did do a video showing how I shaded this skin using a different image. I did a video showing how I shaded this skin because this is the first time I actually started using the scarlet red um, castle art pencil when I was shading skin and I think she's worked out really well. Just bring her in close so you can see a few details there. Of course there's white gel pen for highlights. This is me, my colouring, there's always white gel pen for highlights but I was really chuffed with how she came out considering the very limited palette there and I managed to find colouring papers that did fit in with that palette so I was really chuffed with that. And yep, yeah, that's the first one that I coloured by Christine Karen. Next we're moving on to a couple of Colouring Heaven magazines. This one is the Fledgling Fairy Special. This is an issue just dedicated to Christine Karen. She has done another one before this but unfortunately that was before I started subscribing to Colouring Heaven so I don't actually have that one. But this one is a gorgeous issue and the picture I coloured in this one is this fairy here. And she is actually part of a video on the channel as well showing how I coloured these eyes. A kind of sea green sort of eye colour she's got going on there. Very, very light sort of sea green she's got in her eyes there. And this one was done, yeah, mainly markers. She has a marker base for her skin and her hair there. That was shaded on top with pencils the same way as the previous picture. Her wings have a coat of, oh... Is it Spectrum Noir? Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen, I think. There's a coat of that onto her wings. I'm not sure if it will show because that is a very, very subtle kind of glitter there. Gone around with white gel pen with a few little fairy sparkles that I like to put onto the fairy wings. The bubbles do have some Dovecraft glitter glue. Yeah, you can get that sparkling a little bit. That is Dovecraft glitter glue on the bubbles. And those have gone around with this silver gel pen. This background is very faint, so hopefully that's showing up on the actual camera. That's very light chalk pastel in the background there, with a little tiny bit of shading around the fairy to give a little bit of shadow and behind her wings. And on this one I used some glitter hair and body gel for the fairy dust that she's blowing in her, in her hands there. Again, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that showing up, but that is glitter hair and body gel. It has a little tiny little holographic stars in it and some gorgeous pink glitter and I thought that would go well with the colour scheme I had going on make it look like she is blowing the fairy dust there but yeah apart from that the pencils over a marker base lots of glitter white gel pen and the spectrum noir I think that is the spectrum noir pen on her wings there just to give it a little extra bit of glitter and yep yeah, that's that one by Christine Karen from fledgling fairy special and some of Christine Karen's work was actually featured in this one as well, the Fairies Compendium. There's a lot of different artists in this one, but some of them are Christine Karen. And the one that I coloured by Christine Karen in this one is actually the back cover. There we go, that's the one that I coloured 
by Christine Karen in this issue and this one was coloured using ballpoint pens and that is um, hopefully an upcoming video when I figure out exactly how I'm going to show you how I do this but yet she was coloured using the ballpoint pens which I have out ready in preparation, just those 10 different colour ballpoint pens there. Bit of cross hatching, hatching, lots of layering. And I did this one because I read a challenge on Colour with Claire's website where she has a little list of challenge, colouring challenges you can do. And one of them was to colour a picture just using ballpoint pens. So I had these multicoloured pens hanging around that were actually a present from my sister, I think, a few months before. And I thought, yeah, why not? So I grabbed those and I used those to colour in this fairy here. I'll bring it up a little bit closer, maybe you can see the hatching, cross hatching, kind of layering effect I've got going on with her skin. Yeah, you can see it on her shoulder there. On her face, it's kind of orange and pink, I think I've layered for her skin, a bit of brown, black in the very dark shadows, a couple of shades of green for the leaves. Her hair was two shades of blue and the pink. The butterflies, of course, they're orange. <laughs> we all know butterflies are orange. I love to do my monarch butterflies. So there we go. That is the one, the back cover of the fairies compendium that I've coloured by Christine Karen. And of course, this book is one of the little prizes in my colouring book collection. I do love this book, the Wildflower Folk book. I have coloured two in here and I think both of them feature in videos on the channel. And there's another one that I do plan to colour. I'm not sure I can find her right now. Oh, there she is. There we go. I don't know if anybody has seen my coffee splash colouring video, but this is a picture that I was talking about colouring, maybe just using coffee. Um, as she's there drinking her lovely hot cup of coffee, or I think it's supposed to be hot cocoa, but I'm going to take it, take it that it's coffee. And she's drinking her lovely hot cup of coffee. And I thought maybe it'd be fun to try and paint that one just with coffee. I don't know, might be fun. I'm really quite nervous about messing this book up though, because I do love it. And the ones that I've coloured in here, we have this strawberry lady. She's done with the marker base as for usual with the pencil shading on top. And this paper is kind of an off-white colour. It's kind of a creamy off-white colour. So I kept the flowers to be white to stand out from that background. I think in Christine Karen's actual art, these are blackberries and raspberries, but I saw them all as blackberries, so they're blackberries. And again, monarch butterfly. I do love colouring the monarch butterflies. And this one is done for a video on the channel showing how I coloured the skin with the marker base and uh, the pencil shading, the light skin there. I think I've also done a video on how I did this hair colour as well, um, but that's with a more Lemoyne image. Um, there's nothing else I think I used on this one apart from a tiny little bit of glitter glue on the bees' wings. Can we get those sparkling? Yeah, there's a tiny bit of the Dovecraft glitter glue on those bees' wings, but apart from that, we're just pencil shading over the marker background and I was super happy with how that one turned out. That was with the Castle Arts and the Arteza pencils. A lot of white gel pen to go around the outlines of the flowers. The white ones there and the little pink. I figured they were dog roses, that's how I coloured them. I'm not sure if they have another name. I've always known them as dog roses, kind of growing the hedgerows around in the UK anyway. So yeah, I coloured those as the kind of pink dog roses. And these are the strawberry blossoms at the bottom there. And yeah, super happy with how that one turned out. I do love the way her skin came out and the way these blackberries came out. It's one of my favourite colourings of last year, I think, that one. And I've also coloured my little wizard in the back. There we go. This one was done with... I think he has quite a bit of marker basing. Yep, he does have a bit of marker basing going on there with Amazon Basics pencils. This one, I managed to get hold of a 48 set of the Amazon Basics pencils. I think it was around either Prime Day or Black Friday. I got some Amazon Basics pencils for a cheap price and I thought I'd try them out on this guy. And he was really reminding me of Rincewind from Terry Pratchett's Discworld series of novels. So I went for that and gave him the red robes. Um, I think it was because it had this wizard written across the bottom and Rincewind in the Discworld he has a wizard written on his hat with the two Z's so I added in another Z on the banner. There was originally only one. I added in the other Z there and uh, yeah I coloured him as Rincewind from the Discworld. He did end up being quite a limited palette I think with mainly the red and the blue but I think he's worked quite well. I think I brought in the Castle Gold pencils, my gold combination there for the edges of his robe and white gel pen 
Apart from that, just the Amazon Basics pencils and watercolour for the background here. Yeah, that was watercolour. And originally he was just in the middle of the page, so I drew in this square or kind of rectangle behind him with a gold sharpie. Just painted that with the watercolour. I did some, I think those are splashes of either gouache or white ink and some white gel pen. Oh, and he does have some yeah, glitter glue on his hat. Oh, we can see that, yeah, his hat is super sparkly with those gold stars because that suited Windswind as well. There does seem to be a little bit of glitter on the edges of his robe as well. I'd forgotten about that. It hasn't been that long since I coloured him, but I've forgotten about that. And yeah, quite happy with how he turned out. And he's kind of a colour along, sort of a series of real-time colouring videos on the channel, that one. And he was super fun. I do love how he's ended up. And those are all the pictures that I've coloured by Christine Karen. Most of these artists, I don't have loads of pictures coloured by them because they're artists that I haven't long discovered, if you will. Next, we're moving on to Mystic Art Mirrors, or Kristin Gloria Sink, I think she's also known as, on Etsy. And this is the special that she did for Coloring Heaven, the Fairy Topia special. Again, I do have a lot of hers on PDF, but those are on the computer. I can't really show you, I'm afraid. But I have coloured quite a few in this Fairy Topia special. And yeah, I'd, I had heard of Mystic Art Mirrors before I actually got this issue, so I was really excited when this one came out and I was, I was looking forward to colouring in it. And this is the first one I coloured. And this one was done just with some Tesco Go Create pencils, a very small set of kind of kids grade pencils. Let's see if I can grab those to show you. Here we go. Yeah, it was these pencils. This is actually a new set that I grabbed because they were on sale a couple of weeks back. I grabbed a couple more. I found them really quite good. They're kind of comparable to Crayola, I think, but they're very cheap kids brand pencils. Just the 12, yep, 12 colours you have in there. And I just picked up this magazine while I was watching TV, grabbed the pencils that were laying around. And I started colouring in this lady just with the limited colours in the in the set. And I think she turned out really, really well. No marker background on this one, just the pencils. And uh, some stick-on crystals, yeah. <laughs> Again, going in with my stick-on crystals. The pearl crystals I have on her necklace there. On these rows of beads. And I remember I was really stuck on what kind of colour to do this gemstone on her necklace. So I coloured everything else first and I was stuck on what colour to do this colour in the gemstone there. And oh, my other half suggested this gemstone, I can't remember what it's called now, is it Dragon Eye or something like that? Something like that, which is black and red when I looked it up and it ended up working really well. I just went with it and was like, yep, <laughs> however that turns out, we'll go with it. And it ended up turning out really well, I think. There we go, you see the old black and red gemstone there. I kept the flowers fairly delicate, but I didn't want to bring in the white gel pen and go around the lines. I thought that might look a bit odd because these lines are fairly thick, so I left them as is. The background, I tried to do a kind of watercolour, maybe splash effect, um, where you blob on the paint and then blow it with a straw to get these kind of streaks going on. I thought that might look quite cool. And yeah, it did work really well. I think, and going towards the bottom, because the figure wasn't actually finished off, there was no end to these lines. I just made it look as if the paint was dripping down there with the pencils, made these, um, made the bottom look like the watercolour effects with coloured pencils that I do love to do, and I think she's worked out really well. Yeah, I do love how she's turned out, and the blue lipstick match in the background, yeah, I do love her. That's the first one I coloured. I can't remember the order I did the rest of them. This one also, a really cheap set of pencils. Um, I think they were called like Art Station or something that I got from WH Smiths. If I'm remembering right, I might not be, because this colour might even be Arteza in the background. But my head is telling me it was the Art Station pencils from Smiths. And again, keeping with a very limited palette. Trying the watercolour effects with coloured pencils in the background there. Um, I tried to give a kind of a galaxy effect. And this, this white gel pen is showing it really well on the camera. I'm seeing the viewfinder. But in reality, it's it's gone a, a pink colour. It's gone a very light pink colour because it's drawn on top of the, the purple and the pink that I've used for the kind of galaxy effect I wanted to have going on there. There's some gold glitter gel pen I can see. I just wanted to concentrate on this kind of galaxy effect and have her kind of appearing out of this big swirl of galaxy there. Because again there was there was no define or there was no definition to her hair. 
So I just kind of blobbed on this galaxy to make it look as if a, a just a wash of paint was going on in the background, but it is actually with coloured pencils. So th that effect is super fun. I do want to try some more of that actually lately. Yeah, a little bit closer. You can see that that white gel pen has turned maybe a little bit pink. But yeah, that, that's kind of expected with the white gel pen when you use it over the top of the, the purpley pinky colours like that. That does happen. So yeah. Not so much of a disappointment because I was expecting it. I love her little ears. <laughs> little speckles on the, like freckles on the tips of her ears. Yeah, that one's worked really well. And the cat, I wanted to be black because my little cat is black. So I try and do my cats black to kind of represent him. And yep, yeah, there we go. There's that one. Next we have, well this is a fairly recent one, yeah there will be quite a few pictures in this little video that you might have seen before fairly recently, hopefully there's some that are fairly new or well technically fairly old you just haven't seen for a while, but this is a fairly recent one that I painted this girl to look like an alien, um, she is marker based for her skin and her hair and that's shaded with the, with the Arteza and the Castle Arts pencils, just show it, yeah marker base there, there's gold glitter gel pen and for her tattoos, for her jewellery, actually her jewellery might be the gold sharpie, yeah her jewellery is the gold sharpie and this background I did with Arteza watercolour pencils and some white gel pen stars, there is quite a bit of glitter as well on that background, can we get it glittering, yeah it's sparkling a little bit up here there yeah, but that's done with the Arteza watercolour pencils. Again, going for the kind of galaxy effect with the purple and the pink because I painted this girl to look like an alien back when I had sci-fi as my monthly theme. And yeah, she she was pretty fun to do. Really quick one just in an evening. So yeah, I'll bring her up close so you can see if there are any little details. Maybe you can see a little bit closer. But yeah, super fun, super quick that one markers pencils and watercolor pencils and a white gel pen but yeah everything I do has white gel pen <laughs> the next one is this one and this one I did I add anything I think I added this circle and I extended some of her hair outside of the circle so we go get on camera and this girl is also a video on the channel showing how I turn this lady into an alien a Navi from the Avatar movies with the marker background, yeah, marker base on her there. Pencil shading, lots of white gel pen for these spots. She did have the spots on her face, I think, if I'm remembering right. And I just added a few more to tie in with the aliens from the movies. I gave her those little square nose that the Navi aliens have. Orange eyes, yeah. Super happy with how she turned out. And the background, I think I did this kind of bokeh effect with the Arteza watercolour pencils. And I remember not being super happy with it at the time. I think I preferred it when it was slightly more blobby, but I went in with the pencils and shaded it to turn it into this more defined kind of bokeh effect, which works. Don't get me wrong, it works, but I think I preferred it when, when it was a little bit looser, I think, there. Um, we do have some stick-on crystals again for this one. Stick-on crystals on a headdress, can we show those? Yeah, we do have some stick-on crystals there because I think they went with the colour scheme. And yeah, the blue and the orange I kept too. This gold sharpie for her jewellery. And yeah, she was quite a fun one again. Not quite as quick, but yeah, still super fun. A little pink nose is super cute. Yeah, we do have a couple more in this one. Oh yeah, here we go. Another limited palette, this one. I tried to make it look as if those mushrooms were glowing. So everything up the top of the page is really light and really glowy going down into the shadows. Down the bottom of the image here, I think I might have added in the frame again. I think it might have just been the girl kind of in the middle of the page and I added in the frame there. Tried to make it look really shadowy towards the bottom, really light towards the top. Very limited palette, green and brown. And yeah, another one I'm super happy with. Yeah, I do love Mr. Got Mirrors. Semi-realistic, but kind of stylized. That is my favorite kind of image to color and the magical kind of fantasy sort of theme. I love to color, so yeah, super fun again. There's lots of gold, glitter gold gel pen, I think. Tiny bit of blue brought in for her eyes and her earring just to kind of echo the blue that I used on the edges of her mushrooms. And yeah, pretty simple that one, but I think fairly effective. <laughs> and again, really fun. 
So yeah, there we go. There's that one. And this is the last one that I did. Again, I think this could have been the Tesco pencils. I'm not entirely sure. But this time I wanted to colour in the style of Christine Karen. So I brought in the, the blue and the pink lighting for her skin. Um, very limited palette again with the with the 12 set of pencils and I wanted to bring in the watercolour effects with colour pencils again which I've used quite a lot in this book apparently and yeah another really fun one to do again orange butterflies but I didn't want to bring the black in so starkly this time so I kept them fairly bright orange with the grey and yeah fairly watery for the background with the, with the watercolour effects with colour pencils can I bring those up so you can see not sure if the lamp is glaring a little bit too much, but yeah, not, not even any glitter. I think there might be some silver, some silver gel pen, some gold gel pen, but I don't think there's anything much else on that one. And that's all I've got to physically show you by Mystic Art Mirrors. As I've said, I do have some more, but they're all on PDF on the computer that I can't actually show you, I'm afraid. So that is the Fairytopia Special by Mystic Art Mirrors or Kristin Gloria Inc. I will try and link her Etsy store in the description because she does an Etsy store with loads of gorgeous images on it. And these next two are the two artists I can decide between to have as my final artist in this top 10. So I'm going to show you both of them. And the first one is Zan Von Zed. I do love Zan Von Zed. As I've said, the stylized kind of portraits, semi-realistic is what I love to colour in. So I have um, three or four, I think, coloured by Zan Von Zed. And I'll show you these ones. This is Ladies of Leisure, the first one in the series. And this one is actually printed onto separate paper there. And this one was a freebie from Colouring Heaven. This is one I was first introduced to, Zan Von Zed. This one was a freebie from Colouring Heaven. And originally it was a grayscale image. And this is really, yeah, this is a really quite early one, March 21 where I was really unsure about colouring grayscale and nowadays I don't mind it and sometimes I would rather have grayscale but this one was back in the day when grayscale was a little bit scary so I took her into an art program and tried to maybe make it a little bit fainter, sharpen it up, get rid of a lot of the grayscale before I coloured her in and I think she does have a marker base. Yeah we do have a marker base and this would be way back when I just had my touch cool markers. We have a marker base um, just shaded with pencil and the background is watercolour and this is actually just dripping with the watercolour trying to get these splashes happening um, that is the actual watercolour splashes can you see those yeah that's not pencils that's actually the watercolour splashes I think I blew it with a straw maybe drew in one or two if it was looking a little bit plain and for these speckles I splashed on some of the blue watercolour with the paintbrush as you do and yeah that's how she's turned out. I remember really, really loving this one. I do love doing these kind of cream colour flowers. Um, again, I didn't go around the edge with the white gel pen, but as I've said, this is an early one. <laughs> Showing my colour combination for the mushrooms. I, again, I do love colouring the mushrooms. And yeah, I was super happy with that one. That one actually lives on the wall in the front room, that one does, because I do love this one. I do love Zan Von Zed. That's the first one that I've coloured in this book. And then we have and we have this one which I have to keep covered up because the the marker is actually doing the yellowing thing. I don't know if that, that's showing up on the camera, but it's actually doing the yellowing thing, this black marker, for some reason. And on the page on the back, you can see there on the page I've put in just to as a as a safeguard, it's um it's yellowed onto that page as well, which is really quite annoying because I wasn't expecting a black pen to be doing the yellowing thing. It's usually like the browns or the reds or something like that. But anyways, this is the lady that I coloured. And again, she was when I was having my sci-fi theme for the month. So this is what I came up with here. And she turned out because I actually Googled sci-fi colour palettes. <laughs> and I came up with two different kind of ones. There was either the grey concrete kind of very boring one. <laughs> or there was the neon kind of colour one. The kind of futuristic city with loads of neon signs and stuff like that. So I tried to combine both of the different kind of industrial and the neon colour palettes into one picture. And I think it's worked pretty good. I tried to make her hair look as if it was glowing kind of neon not quite as effective as I would have wanted but yeah there's a little bit of a suggestion of it there with the light shining onto her 
jumpsuit another pretty quick one just the marker base yeah as you can tell because the marker is doing the yellowing um marker base with pencil shading and a little bit of white gel pen there are a few stars i drew in in the background to give a kind of space sort of effect there but yeah pretty pretty basic one that one fairly quick and easy just really trying to go for that uh, neon effect. I think maybe if I went around the edges of her hair with a white gel pen, that would have helped, maybe. But yeah, she is what she is at the end of the day. And yeah, she was a really fun one to do. I really need to colour more Zan Von Zed, I think. And there we go, that's that one. Next, I have a couple in Ladies of Leisure 2. I do only have the first two books by Zan Von Zed because I told myself I wasn't going to buy any more until I coloured more pictures in the actual books that I have. And the ones that I've coloured in this one are this lady here. And this one was, yeah, a couple of years ago now. Uh, November 22, yeah. She was a couple of years ago. Um, she does have a marker base, if I remember right. Yeah, we do have a marker base. It's shaded with various pencils. Her horns, I remember using Crayola Colours of the World to do her horns. Her skin is my usual skin kind of combination. I tried to give her a corset or a top there, a little bit of a leather texture. A little bit of a scratchy, beaten up leather texture I tried to give her there. There's some gold sharpie for the edges of her costume. And this background is done using super tips as watercolour, I think. And painting it onto the paper. I'm scribbling on a plate and painting it onto the paper and then I think maybe I kind of touched the tip of the pen to the paper when it was still damp to get these speckles if I'm remembering right <laughs> but I can't, I can't remember how I did this bit here looks like I've splashed on some clear water there to see what would happen and it has made quite a fun little background I think it does go in with my again the green and brown kind of uh, color scheme I've got going on there which is one I do like to use um, this could be gold um, gouache paint for the frame, I think. And there's some of the white gel pen for these frills around the top of her corset. Because I, I couldn't quite tell if this was another top underneath or whether it was part of the corset. So, yeah, either way. It could be either way, I think, the way I've done it. But I think she's worked out really well. Yep, I do love Colleen's Anne Von Zed. And this last one is a fairly recent one. Here we go. It's my poppy lady. My poppy lady from the end of last year. And this one was done with some kids art supplies. This one's also a video on the channel showing how I did that. Um, when my other half brought me some art supplies back from when he went shopping. And I wanted to use them in a picture. Um, her skin is done with Crayola crayons. I really want to try again colouring a picture with these crayons. And using some tips that people gave me in the comments. To see if I can get those crayons working a lot better. Um, it's all worked okay and it was quite fun to do and this background and her clothes were done with the with some fiber tip pens just some kids fiber tip pens where I scribbled on a plate and painted on the color there so the page is very wrinkled because this is Amazon paper so it wasn't taking the water too too well it has flattened fairly well but you can still see the wrinkles yeah you can see the wrinkles and it does make the yeah <laughs> the, the watercolor sound we have there and i wanted to keep it fairly monochrome apart from bringing in the red and the black into her clothes because these poppies in the background are just the seeds um not the usual red and black of poppy flowers so i brought those colors into her outfit and i'm quite happy with how the actual colors worked it was just using the kids art supplies to try and get the effects that i actually wanted proved to be rather difficult and i did struggle especially with those crayons but i think i might have a better idea of how to use those now so as i said i would love to color another picture try and bring in those crayons but there we go that's the last one that i've actually colored by zan von zed And the last artist I'm going to show you my coloured pages of. There's only like two or three, I think, by this artist. And this is Alan Roberts. He is a horror artist. So if anybody doesn't want to see zombies, especially zombies or anything um, kind of gory, then turn off now. Thank you for watching. But yeah, I don't have many books by Alan Roberts. And this is the, the first book that I do have. Beauty of Horror is a really small book, The Ghosts of Christmas. It's a pretty small book, so what I did, I copied the pages onto the computer and scanned them up bigger so I could colour them, like have a proper go at colouring them. I do have two that I've coloured from this book. And the first one is this kind of, there we go, that zombie Santa Claus that I coloured. 
and this is my version here and this one I copied up onto A4 paper and then I coloured him and cut him out and I mounted him actually mounted him onto the scrapbook paper and I tried to make a background that looked a bit like um, ripped and uh, peeling wallpaper from like an old haunted house or something like that which I thought might work really well I coloured Santa with um, possibly Arteza yeah, it could be Arteza pencils there. I tried to give the frame the uh, look of kind of tarnished copper when it goes this kind of greeny teal colour with the verdigris there. And I think, yeah, that was super fun to do. Um, I need to show you guys the colour combos I used for that at some point because I think it worked really well. And yeah, Santa has lots of glitter on him because he's a zombie, but he is, of course, Santa. So yeah, he's very, very glittery if I can... Maybe get the glitter going. He has red in his beard and on his axe. There we go. This background is a blue gouache paint, I think. Um, yeah, blue gouache paint with some snowflake stickers. I can't remember what actually was in that background there. There could have been snowflakes or something, but I just painted over the whole background, added these little stickers. And yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. This one was for a colouring scavenger hunt, um, a Danny Buttons colouring scavenger hunt when we had to colour a picture of Santa. I don't really do seasonal colouring. I'm not a very seasonal colourist. And especially Christmas, I don't tend to colour Christmas pictures too much unless they're of the alternative variety, which, yeah, I think I would say that was of the alternative variety. But yeah, I was super pleased with him. Just pencils for that one. No markers. Gouache paint, snowflake stickers and collage paper. And this is um, acrylic paint for these splashes that I've got going on there. And yeah, Alan Robert actually commented on that one when I put it up on Instagram, which I was really pleased about as well. So there we are. That's my zombie Santa. Let's bring the book back in so I can show you the, the other one I coloured. It's this one here. Oh, that's glaring. Let me see that one. That one there is one that I've coloured, but again, I copied it up onto the bigger paper. And this is the picture that actually made me buy the book. I loved this picture. <laughs> there we go. A fairly old one now, but you may have seen it before. This is a zombie cat. <laughs> this one was coloured with Castle Arts Gold pencils because this, this was when I first got my Castle Arts Gold um, set of pencils coloured it and then cut it out and mounted it on this little background that I made using um, scrap of paper again with the torn, torn torn wallpaper kind of idea. This is just plain paper for the skirting board and then this at the bottom is collage paper with a wood kind of plank effect on it so I thought it might look like a bit of a room going on in the background there. And yeah, again, really, really fun to do. I do love the kind of quirky sort of zombies that he draws, um, especially when there's a, a lot of humour in the picture. But yeah, I know he's not for everybody, but he is one of my favourite artists. So I thought I couldn't really leave either of these last two out because I do love them both. So yeah, that one, uh, just Castle Arts pencils, white gel pen, I think. No markers, just the pencils. And yeah, a really, really fun one to do. One that I've been dying to do for a long time. I finally did last Christmas. Yeah, there we go. That's my zombie cat. And the last one, last but not least, as they say, is another one of my favourite pictures. This is the only other book I've got by Alan Roberts. I do have some, a couple of freebie PDFs that I have. This is the only other book that I have because I really, really love the concept of having these famous people as the zombies. And this is one you've probably seen a couple of times, but sorry, not sorry, because I love it still. Here we go. Here's my new Nirvana Kurt Cobain zombie, which was super fun to do. Again, this was the one that made me buy the book. I really love this picture for some reason, even though I'm not a huge fan of Nirvana. And this was really fun to do. I remember really enjoying it. I looked up the video for the song so I could try and get the colours right. So most of the colours are fairly right, but I've made them look a little bit kind of old and decrepit and zombified. Um, the background, I made a video on the channel where I used the, the torn kind of note paper, stuck it into the background uh, with the coffee stains and then just doodled on maybe some lyrics from the song, some stars, um, the anarchy symbol there, and uh, stuck on some star stickers. And the idea was to look like a school notebook, a school exercise book. 
where you're doodling on um, lyrics from your favourite songs and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, uh, that one is just uh, Arteza and Castle Arts pencils. Around the edges of the figures, there is some silver gel pen. I think that's silver glitter gel pen. Yeah, that's silver glitter gel pen. And the black is just um, a black Crayola super tip and just tidied up with a little bit of black pencil at the end just to make those figures stand out from the background and yeah i'm not gonna gush about it too much but it's one of i think oh, oh, i think i maybe have three really really favorite pictures from last year one of them's my strawberry lady that i've showed you earlier this is another one and yeah i really love how that turned out and that will be concluding i think um, my top well top 11 i think we came down to um a series of artists i do have in the in the planning stage anyway an honorable mentions kind of video where i show artists where i've only colored maybe one or two or even no pictures yet but i really hope to be able to color in the future all these artists are ones that were introduced to me fairly early on so I have had a chance to colour quite a few of their pictures up till now but some I'm only just discovering and getting into and realising that I love them so I'll make another little video maybe with the honourable mentions but yeah up till now that is my top 11 <laughs> colouring book artists because I really couldn't decide between Sam Von Zed or Alan Roberts so I added them both and I uh, hope you can forgive me for that. Hopefully you've all enjoyed following along and looking at my top 10 10, well top 11 in the end um, coloring book artists if you have enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing thank you for watching everybody take care and i'll see you in future videos bye